work. We have so much data. We have more data than we can possibly use. We always start with, well, what decision are you trying to make? And then what data do you need? So if I take a couple of decisions, one is the decisions we do for airlines. So the data we provide about the weather in the atmosphere actually helps them avoid turbulence. They pay us for that because it's better for the plane, it takes less wear and tear, and it's certainly better for the passenger. So many people think data is rational, but there's a huge emotional component. Clients like big retailers use prediction data to predict what people are going to be hungry for. Because weather is emotional, it changes the way we feel, and then it changes what we're hungry for. If I look at how data has changed in just the last 24 months, our big focus has been to rethink data on a mobile device. Because we used to do data centrally, and then we would broadcast to each location on what was happening in the city or the state. But now people with a mobile device want to know what's happening right where they are. So we had to build a new model to not do the weather for 2.3 million locations, but to actually do the weather for every location on Earth. So as we think about what's next, we think about the Internet of Things. We think a lot about weather in cars, whether the windshield wipers are on or off, what the friction is on the wheels. We think about data in the homes so that the thermostats actually adjust to the conditions outside. Certainly we think that data can be very important in healthcare. And we built this whole menopause model because women get more hot flashes on humid days and then that helps people know what to buy because they know what the weather is going to be. It'll create a better world if everybody has access to data and actually uses it. I define data as decision support. Thank you.